Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so I'm here with the latest on Tropical Storm Julia, which is expected to become a hurricane very soon. And it is likely to bring life-threatening conditions to portions of Central America as we're going to be headed into uh, the early part of the new week. And so guys, before I go into details with this system, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update on the tropics. And to show your support for the channel, you can leave a like on this video. Okay, and so let us go ahead and get on with the cyclone. And going back to that satellite imagery of it, there we are seeing that Julia is quite that Julia is quite massive right now in the South Caribbean and making its way towards the coast of Nicaragua. And so uh, very dangerous conditions are expected from the cyclone as it is going to be closing in. And right now it is likely that uh, areas are already being impacted by the cyclone by its outer band. And some of those outer bands are likely uh, potentially going to be reaching Jamaica but of course nothing major is expected here from it but uh, increased rainfall across the island is possible as a result of Julia but of course most of it is well to the south of the island and we're not expected to be directly impacted of course it's headed to Nicaragua and so uh, right now there are various watches and warnings that are in place and so uh, going to the cone forecast here we see that we have some areas highlighted in red blue pink and yellow and so those are the watches and warnings. And so there's a hurricane warning and that is in red. That is in effect for San Andres, Providencia and Santa Catalina Islands, Colombia, as well as Nicaragua from Bluefields to Puerto Cabezas. And then there is a hurricane watch that is in pink. That is in effect for Nicaragua, north of Puerto Cabezas to the Honduras-Nicaragua border. And there's also tropical storm warning in blue in effect for Nicaragua, south of Bluefields to the Nicaragua-Costa Rica border and Nicaragua, south of Puerto Cabezas as to the Honduras Nicaragua border and then a tropical storm watches in yellow that is in effect for Honduras from the Nicaragua Honduras border to Punta Patuca so those areas are all likely to experience those tropical storm or hurricane conditions come uh, tomorrow starting as soon as today and going into tomorrow and as the system closes in and so uh, it is going to be bringing as I said those very dangerous conditions and the main problem with any tropical cyclone is the water be it from the storm surge or the heavy rainfall that results in that inland inundation so uh, a lot of rainfall is likely from the system here and as a matter of fact uh, here are the rainfall totals so for San Andres and Providencia 6 to 12 inches of rainfall are expected in Nicaragua 5 to 10 inches some isolated maxima of 15 inches and then elsewhere in Central America 4 to 8 inches isolated 12 inches the isthmus of Tehuantepec in in Mexico 2 to 4 inches with isolated maxima of 6 inches and so uh, all of this heavy rainfall that is expected as I said is likely to cause flooding especially in low-lying flood prone areas guys and then uh, in terms of that storm surge uh, it is likely that we're going to be having the inundation of the coastline as a result of the storm's winds pushing the water on shore being at least two to four feet above normal levels and this is for areas such as San Andres, Providencia and Santa Catalina Island as well as along the coast of Nicaragua uh, that is under a hurricane warning so guys uh, please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe if you're there because this is not a cyclone to be uh, underestimated. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what models are expecting in terms of the track guidance and intensity guidance. So of course, uh, here's the model intensity guidance and models are expecting that this is going to become a hurricane. Uh, it's going to be rapidly intensifying into a hurricane before making landfall. But of course, uh, that time is in fact limited because it only has the rest of today uh, to really take advantage of the conducive environment it is in. In. but after that it is going to be moving inland with all of those dangerous conditions up ahead for the various areas and then in terms of the model track guidance here as some of these models are showing something quite different we have a few that are expecting that it is going to be making its way into the gulf of mexico and a few expecting that it is going to be crossing over into the eastern pacific so uh the long term for this is quite uncertain so we just really have to wait and see what's going to be happening but for the most part areas such as of course nicaragua 
Honduras, uh, Costa Rica, El Salvador, maybe even Guatemala and areas as far as Belize could experience uh, impacts from the system. But of course, the worst of the storm will likely be in Nicaragua and the islands uh, of the coast. And actually, tracking Julia right now is really reminiscent of Iota back in 2020, uh, though that was a very disastrous hurricane. I mean, Iota was a high-end category 4, initially thought to be Cat 5, but it made landfall as a high-end category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 155 miles per hour. And so, uh, thankfully, that is not expected with Julia, so uh, it is not likely that this storm is going to be intensifying into a major hurricane, but nevertheless, it is going to be bringing along with it those very uh, dangerous aforementioned conditions, guys. So, again, it cannot be emphasized enough to take all the necessary precautions and stay safe because this cyclone is very, very dangerous and it will be bringing those life-threatening impacts. And so, uh, in terms of favorability right now in the vicinity of Julia, when we take a look at the sea surface temperature map, we're seeing here that uh, sea surface temperatures are quite conducive 29 30 degrees celsius being seen and of course as i usually say tropical cyclones need at least 26 or 26 and a half degrees celsius so uh, that is quite conducive for julia and then in terms of the wind shear now when we think about the wind shear uh, uh those are the upper level winds and the red indicates unfavorable wind shear which is when we have those strong upper level winds that really help to inhibit tropical cyclone intensification and growth and then we have the yellow that means that things are quite neutral but the ideal shear is a uh, favorable wind shear of course that is when we, we don't really have those upper level winds being a problem for the cyclone and so we're seeing that for julia it is in a region that has mainly say neutral going to favorable wind shear so that is really going to be aiding in intensification because of course the cyclone is just growing and intensifying with not much interruption from any unfavorable conditions and i mean it is quite evident that the storm is not really Really encountering a whole lot of unfavorable conditions when we take a look at it on satellites it is a very symmetrical cyclone that is just growing and uh, getting itself together and intensifying even more so of course again landfall is expected in the early morning hours of tomorrow with the system uh, likely to be a category one hurricane as of now the national hurricane center is calling for maximum winds of 90 miles per hour at landfall so uh, there can be higher gusts though but of course the wind is not the main issue with the cyclone. It is going to be the heavy rainfall that is anticipated. And so uh, now is the time to get all preparations underway and hunker down for this storm because it is going to be bringing those very deadly conditions to sections of the uh, to sections of Central America, not just Nicaragua, but of course other areas such as Costa Rica, Honduras, maybe El Salvador, Guatemala will be impacted by this as it makes its way uh, through the area. And so I'll be keeping you guys updated on this cyclone as time goes by. And so that is really it for now. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there. And of course, remember to always be with wise.